Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I saw this animation recently on a blog and I don't even remember which one it was to tell you the truth, but uh, I thought, you know what? That would be kind of fun to try to recreate. And I had a couple things in mind. Number one, I wanted to do this with just a single element and add some stuff in a data attribute or something to make all this kind of appear magically. The other thing is I wanted it to be something that I could reference for different instances. And so I could have multiple paragraph tags all over the page are doing the same thing. And they would all kind of keep track of themselves separately. We're going to do that with something called JavaScript classes. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I've got over here just an HTML page on the left and on the right with live server, just that page pulled up. I've done some basic styling here and I should mention there's going to be a code pin link in the description where you can grab all of this uh, later if you want to. I've got everything in line here just to kind of keep everything in the same file, but you can see it's just a plain HTML file with a style tag up top. And then we've got a body here with just the class uh, of container, and all this is just getting it to be set in the middle and spaced apart. And then I've got an empty script tag that we're going to be adding to here in a second. So let's come down here, and first of all, I'm going to go ahead and add that paragraph tag I talked about. And you can see here that I've got a data attribute on it called data-typewriter, which is just one I made up. You can do that with data attributes. Just do data-whatever you want to call it. And then I've added in here as text, developer dot, 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 comma. And that comma is important because we're going to split all this text on this comma. But with that in place, we've got this set up to where we can now style it and then use vanilla JavaScript to get it to type out and remove itself over and over again. Now, just so we can style a little bit better, let's come in here and add a developer. And that way it's there on the page. And now I'm going to come back up here and add in a few things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to add some styling for anything with the data-typewriter attribute. You can see here I've just added a font family, a weight of bold, font size. The only kind of odd thing here is I've actually added a height itself. Basically, when that, uh, that cursor stops or starts blinking, it's going to have its own height. And the text itself is going to have its height. And when all that text is removed, it technically is going to change the size, the height there. And so I was trying to think of how to do this, and the best thing I came up with was just to add an actual manual height. There may be a better way. If you know of one, let me know in the description. All right, the other thing I'm going to do is we're going to add a class whenever we're typing, so that way the cursor isn't blinking during typing because, well, that's how typing works. And so I'm just using the not selector here and saying whenever there's a class of typing on this, then um, don't show this. Otherwise, go ahead and show this. So it'll show whenever there's not a class of typing. So it's technically showing right now, but we have to write the keyframes. So let me paste those in here too. And I'm just going quick on the CSS since this is mostly about that uh, vanilla JavaScript. So we're going to call this, let's see, blink caret. I'm not sure why. I think this needs to be cursor. And now you can see it's blinking over here. And all I'm doing is saying, hey, I want to run this keyframe animation every 1.1 second. And I'm giving it the step end here, which is a timing function and then telling it to happen infinitely. Now, if you see down here, I'm saying at 0 and 100% have no uh, border color, so transparent. And then on 50%, go ahead and change it to this orange color. Now, let's go ahead and just take this off so that we can focus, and we'll turn it back on at the very end. Now, if I come back down this way, the next thing we want to focus on is the script itself. And that's kind of where we're going to do most of our work today. And we're going to use something called JavaScript classes. Like I mentioned, I want this to be able to be used in multiple elements all over the page, and I want them to each keep track of themselves separately, and that's a classic use case for a class in JavaScript. Now, classes essentially are object creators. They're based on prototypes in JavaScript, but they have their kind of own special flavor as well. And the way you declare a class is just you say class, and then you give it a name, and by default, by convention, these are uppercase. And then for each class, you need to give it something called a constructor. And this essentially tells it how to create the object it's supposed to create. It's an object creation factory. And so you've got to give it some instructions. So we're going to have it pass in uh, an element and then some options. And I'll show you those in a second. But the way you basically attach a certain instance to this class that it's going to spit out. So when it comes out of the factory of this class typewriter, it's going to have several things on it. And we're going to say this.l is going to be equal to the element that we've passed in. So what you're basically saying is, hey, I want you, when you create something with this class, to attach a property called L. And that's going to be equal to whatever L we passed in. So for now, let's leave it just like that. And I'm going to come down here, and now we're going to create this, or we're going to call this class. So let's just call it L1 or something like that. You can call this class by using the new keyword. So we'll say new typewriter, and then we just need to pass it something. And you can see IntelliSense here is telling me I've got an element I can pass in and options I can pass in. So let's pass in an element. We'll say document.query selector, and then we'll pass in the selector of data-typewriter. So I'm going to save that, and so we can see what's going on. Let's console.log the L1. 
Now, let me jump over here and open up the dev tools and you can see now we've got this console log showing up and this is our typewriter class that we created. And you'll notice that I've got a property on this called L and that's exactly what I've passed in and it is this paragraph tag. So you can see how I've got an instance of this already up and going and the typewriter has created this object with a certain property called L. Now I mentioned that classes are based on prototypes and just like any prototype, if I came in here and said, let's do um, const num equals, have I done this before? Yeah, okay, so we've got a new number and then I can just console.log the num like this. So this is just a normal number and it's gonna wrap this in kind of a, a fake object here. But you can see that I've got this on this prototype, multiple things just on any number I would ever use in JavaScript. Just like the class has a constructor, so does this number object. And then I've got all these methods available to me. Probably one you're more familiar with is a string. So let's come in here and say, I don't know, um, string one or something like that. And we'll say new, and you don't have to use the new to create a string. You can just do it like this, a string literal. But in order to access this object, the easiest way is just to do new string. And then we'll say something like hi or whatever. Now I can console.log the string one. And again, I have access to everything in this object. Now notice that just as we have an L property, the string, any string, has a length property. That's why you can access dot length and get the length of a string. And just like with a number, you also have uh, prototypes available and you have things like care at or concat or fixed or whatever. And you've probably used some of these before, like includes. So that's all we're doing when it comes to classes. But the nice thing is this means that each of these instances that we pass in will have all of these different properties and eventually the methods we're gonna write attached to that instance. All right, well, enough talking. Let me actually walk through a couple other things we're going to add to this. So every word, every element we pass in is going to have that data attribute. We're going to have words that are attached to that data dash typewriter. So what I want to do is just split those off and so that I have access to each of those. So let's come in here and do a spread operator inside an array. We'll say this.l, because if you're going to reference the instance, you have to use the, this keyword, this.l.dataset.typewriter. And the reason I'm saying typewriter is because that's the name of the data set right here. And then I want to split it on all of these, like I mentioned earlier. So we can just use the dot split method, and then we'll split it on all those commas. So now if I save it, you'll see that over here, I've got not only the element, but I've also now got the words, and they've just been split on those commas. Now we're going to have at least three other things we want to kind of keep track of and be able to impact with this options array. One would be the speed, like that. One is going to be the delay in between typing and the words, and then one will be whether or not we want it to repeat. So let's set a default for each of these. So we'll start with our options object we've passed in and say, hey, let's look at the speed property on that. Now, it may be that we don't pass in an ob options object, and so we would want to have a default. So in order to do that, we need to make this optional. So by adding that question mark, we can do that. And then with a double pipe, this will be an or. We're gonna say by default, just set it to 150 milliseconds. That's each letter will take that long to type. And then let's go ahead and copy all of this and come in here. And we're gonna say if there's a delay, then go ahead and use that. And if there's not a delay, we'll set it to something like 1200. So a little bit over a second. Maybe let's make that a little bigger, like 1500. And we'll say options.repeat. And if nothing gets passed in, it'll just be false. And so that will, will kind of be our default. Otherwise it'll be true if we pass in true. Let me go ahead and save this. And you're seeing we actually are getting an error. I think we do actually need to have that question mark in there. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see here we've got um, repeat is undefined. So that's falsely anyhow. So again, that'll be our default. The speed is 150, the delay is 1500. These are all the defaults that have been set because we didn't pass in an options object. If we did come in, however, and add a comma right here, we could pass in these. So we could say something like speed equals, I don't know, like 2000, which would be really slow. But now you can see that it's changed to 2000. We could also say that repeat is equal to true. And then you see that changes as well to true. So again, we can overwrite these defaults, but these are the defaults we're gonna start with. Now, this whole thing is gonna get kicked off with a function we're gonna write inside of here, a method called uh, init typing, like that. We're gonna actually call it as soon as we construct the object. So let's go ahead and write that. And with classes, you don't have to say like function or anything like that. You just actually type init typing just like that. So this method is gonna loop over each of the words in this particular instance. So we'll use a for loop for that. We'll just say const word of this dot words. So we're looking at the property and saying for each of the things in that array, this is what I want you to do. We're gonna pass this to something called this dot typewrite, which we haven't written yet, typewrite, and then we're gonna pass it the word. 
Now we're going to need to come back to this in just a second, but let's go ahead and write that other method so that we don't get yelled at here. So we're going to have type write like that, and we're going to have it take in a word. And the very first thing we want to do when a word gets passed in is go ahead and toggle on that typing class, and that way our cursor stops blinking. So let's write a little helper function up here. We're just going to call toggle uh, typing. And this will just be an arrow function, so we can do it just like that in here and say this dot l dot class list dot toggle. We're going to toggle the class of typing. So now I should be able to come in here and say just this dot toggle typing. Now I'm having to use this keyword all throughout because again, remember, we're tying each time we pass something through this, we want to connect these methods to the particular instance. And you do that with this keyword. So we've turned off the cursor. Now the next thing we need to do is loop through each of the letters and whatever word's been passed in. So very much like we did below. So we'll say const letter. So for each letter of the word dot split, and we'll split it on nothing. And then inside this loop, we want to first of all grab the text content of whatever uh, element that we've passed in. So that's our this dot l dot text content. And we want to add to it our letter. Now, before I save this, let's come back up here because you might remember we added developer in here just so we could see how it's styled, but it should be nothing to start with. Let's save it. And now you see it's adding them in here, but we've got a problem. And I mentioned we'd need to go back and work on this because they're all just being added immediately. Now, what I want is for each letter to be added and then to wait and then to add and to wait. And if you're going to do something like that, you actually need to pass in either some kind of set timeout or a promise. So let's go ahead and work with promises just because that'll give, give us a nice excuse to work on promises. So I'm going to write a little helper function up here. We'll just call it wait. And this is going to take in a number of milliseconds. And then it will pass back to us a new promise. And we'll pass in resolve. And when it resolves, we'll say set timeout. And again, this is our resolve. And we'll do it after whatever milliseconds that we've passed in. So let me save that. And then let's come down here. All we're going to do is basically use this to allow this to be an await a sync. So I'll say await, and this is one of the reasons we did a for loop is because you can do a sync await inside a for loop. That also means I need to call this, uh, let's see, a sync, not await. And then all I'm going to do is pass in down here await this dot wait. So again, this helper function is what we're calling, and we'll do it based on this dot speed. So the speed of our letters being typed in is what I want. We've got a problem, and that is that each of the first letters are being added. So we actually need to do the same thing down here as well. So this needs to be uh, an async. And then this needs to be an await. Now, if we do that, we should be getting these in one at a time. And I remember we actually changed this down here, didn't we? All right, so that's why it's going so slow. So there's developer and then designer, and then I think photographer is the next one. Now, what we want to do is actually after we type it in, we want to then remove it. Well, uh, I guess the first thing we need to realize is after we type it in, we want this toggle typing to be put back on. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's come down here and it should turn it back on when it's all the way done. And if I were to come all the way over here, is it is it back on? Oh, we turned that animation off. Let's come back up here. Where was that animation? Right here. All right, let's come over here and see if we can figure out if it's working. There it is. Okay, it's blinking. Okay, cool. So let's actually just leave the animation on. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, now let's see, type right after we've turned it back on. Now what we want to do is await just a second at the very end. We passed in a delay property, so we can use the same function here to just delay for a second. So we'll say await this dot wait, and that's our this dot delay. And again, that's the property that lives on this particular instance. And so we'll delay for just a second. And you can see it does that, and then it keeps going because we haven't yet erased it and restarted. Let's copy this back down because after the wait, I then want it to stop blinking again so that I can remove everything. Now, what we're going to do is remove each of the letters slowly until we get all the way back to nothing. So we can just create a while loop here. We'll say while this dot l dot text content dot length. So the length of the text is not equal to zero. So as long as it's not equal to zero, and, and I've just got a ligature on here, but all I'm doing is adding that like that. So while it's not equal to zero, I want this dot l dot text content to be equal to this dot l dot text content dot slice zero minus one. Now let me explain this briefly. What I'm saying is basically every time it loops through this, I want it to check, hey, are there any letters left to erase? And if there are not any letters to, or left to erase, it'll skip this while loop. If there are still letters left to erase, it'll take whatever the current text content is and remove the last letter. And I want this typing speed to be the exact same as it was coming in. So let's copy this down right here and I'll have it wait each time it checks the letter in this while loop like that. And then once it's erased the entire word, I want it to turn the toggle back on so that it looks like it's typing. 
So now it should blink, and then it should remove all the letters, and then it should go again. Now you'll notice a couple things. Number one, our delay is kind of short in between the words, and number two, it's just still blinking at the very end. The problem is that we're not waiting at the very start to actually start typing. We're just doing it right away. So what we can do is copy this one that we're waiting at the very end uh, back and add it to the beginning. So it waits, it types out, it blinks for a second, then it untypes, and then it waits for a second, and then it should type the next one. All right, so it should just do that, and then when it's done, it'll just stay there blinking. We'll fix that in a second. So again, just to kind of walk through this, when we first pass it, type right, each word will first wait just a second while it's blinking, then it will remove the blinking, then it will loop through each letter of whatever word's been passed in. In between each letter, it will add it to the text content, but then it will wait whatever the speed is that we've given the typing. Then it will add back the cursor when it's, it's done typing and set this waiting period to the same as we started at the beginning. After that delay is done, it will then remove typing once again, or that typing class once again, so that it stops blinking, and then it'll start on this while loop. And as long as there are letters in the word left, it will go ahead and remove the last one, and then wait just a second, and remove the last one, and whatever our typing speed is, wait that long. And then at the very end here again, it'll add back in this typing so that it starts blinking all over again. Now, there's one other thing we need to do, and that is we need to be able to decide if we want it to repeat or not. Now I have gone ahead and I've passed in true down here, but we're not yet doing anything with this. So let's come back up here to our init typing because this is where we can decide what to do if repeat equals true. So we'll say if this dot repeat, and remember that's the property that we can pass in, then we want to await, and we're gonna actually recursively call await this dot init typing. So now let me save this and let's go ahead actually and speed this up massively so it goes real quick. All right, so it goes quick, it removes itself. Actually, let's also add our delay here and we'll just do 10 as well. So it's super quick and then it's done and just keeps going over and over again. You can see that because we've now passed in and this is true. We also then wanna pass in an else statement. Well, that's disturbing. Let's, <laughs> let's change this up. Um, so if there is no repeat, when it's all done with the entire loop of those words, then I want to remove that animation altogether. So we'll say this.l.style.animation is now going to be equal to none. And let's go ahead and save that. And then let's make this annoying again, just so we can see it go quickly. And boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's not done. All right. Um, well, that's because we've got repeat on true here. So if I remove that, it should finish and then stop and be all gone. Now, if I don't have this on here, I'll re remove that it'll just keep blinking infinitely right there. So it kind of depends what you want it to look like, but assuming you don't want that, that's what I'm gonna do. Now let's remove this speed and delay. We'll just say those can be the default, but we will set repeat to true. And now it should be able to type in, it'll wait just a second and then it'll remove itself. And as it's going here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this console.log and then you don't need to actually capture this. But we do need to do one more thing, and that is we need to actually add a second one here just so we can see that they're both working. So let me remove that and save that there. And let's come back up here. And just to see that they're both kind of working separately, where's my HTML? Let me just paste in some random text here. You can see we've got coffee roaster, pizza maker, and basket weaver. I mean, I don't know. Anyhow, so we've got all three of those things in there, but we're still only doing a single query selector here. So all we have to do is come down here and let's do this. Let's do a little loop here. So we'll say um, document dot query selector all. We're just going to select anything with the data dash type writer uh, attribute on it. And then we'll do a for each loop here and say for each, we'll just call it each L. We'll do a new typewriter and then we'll pass it the L. And this should be very similar. I guess let's go ahead and pass in the same repeat just so we can see it happening. Because again, we can pass in an L and we can also pass in options. So now both of those should go together and you'll notice that their timing is separate. So they each wait when they're done, which means the time it, timing doesn't stay in sync because the second one has longer words. So again, what we're doing is by creating this class, we're making it to where we can reuse this component anywhere on the page and the single instance, the object that's been created by our class keeps track of itself using all the methods and things that we attached to it. Well, I hope this was a big help. And if you are a coffee roaster, a pizza maker, and a basket weaver, then please leave a comment in the description because you seem like the person I would want to know. All right, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.